Welcome back everyone to another episode of Rule the Waves with the Auto Resolve Simulator. I believe this is episode number five. It might be up in episode number six. Just a quick mention that uh, I am putting together this Rule the Waves Fleet Combat Simulator uh, multiplayer tournament. So you'll be submitting ships and if you have uh, if you're interested in discussing the actual rules, conditions, whatever, feel free to jump on the Discord. Uh, my Discord should be a link in the video description below and you can chat about it in the Rule the Waves uh, channel. So I'll be talking about that actually today. I suppose this episode will go up on Saturday. I'll be talking about that Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we should have a Rule the Waves announcement, uh, tournament announcement um, tomorrow. So that said, let's jump back into this. So we're at war with France, and uh, simulator-wise, I've made some uh, updates. We're still using version 504. But I'm trying to get this split between the 505, which will be the aggressive 505, and the normal 505. Normal 505 will be basically just a small iteration on 504, but the aggressive 505 is going to have the courage factor greatly increased, so you'll fight a little bit longer. And also going to not have ships flee as quickly, and the flea mechanic itself is going to be changed. So I'm still doing a little bit of testing on that. Anyways, we should secure whatever. We'll just constantly promote... Ooh, triple torpedo tubes. Well, that's fantastic. France is starting to lose food. We have a fleet battle. We know what to do with this. Save. Sim. And... Whoops. Save, sim, and run game. It's a simple cycle. So one of the things I'm doing actually is uh, I've been getting the Ruled Waves tournament um, information all together. Wow, that was a big fleet. Did we lose anybody? Wow, okay, we torpedoed an enemy battle cruiser. That's good news. And we lost the submarine that was attempting to do that. So it looks like we actually sunk one of the battle cruisers. I actually don't know. Let's go look at the log here because this is actually a pretty cool result. Um, let's see, what in general was the state of affairs? We had six ba uh, dreadnoughts versus their two, four battleships versus their six. So we, basically six to four in terms of really the biggest dread capital ships, dreadnoughts, battlecruisers. Six to four, and then four to six, exactly the reciprocal of that first one. But for battleships, much less important. We had eight light cruisers, they had three armored cruisers, and four light cruisers, so they outnumbered us there. And 15 destroyers versus 23, so we are down on that. So basically, it's I think it's the quality of our dreadnoughts here, which certainly carried the day. But I think this is going to be a very interesting battle, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Alright, so we started off the battle at 26,000 yards. Good visibility, basically. Um, this is uh, so many... So many. Oh, we actually had uh, some minesweepers, which are going to play an insignificant role, probably get themselves killed, a few of them at least. So in the very beginning, we did fire, and we started to hit their Turville. I know their Turville is very good. It's probably able to fire very well at us, but it was actually their Magenta, which targeted the Vittelsbach and hit for a good amount. Um, let's take a look at the combat stats, actually, before I jump uh, further down. 2244, 2244 versus, yeah, much better. Uh, our ships are much better, 1536. Anyway, let's go back down and look and see what happened after that. So the next round, this is going to be a lot of firing. We're closing to firing range at this point. And ships are engaging. We are hitting the Turville. Wow, the Turville might have just gone down. She was hit for, ooh, the Duquesne is actually hit for 15% here by the Celestian. That must have been pretty much a critical hit. Um, yeah, the Turville, which is, I think, the same class as the Duquesne. They're both Turville class. They, they, most of them took like five, six, six, basically. And then 14 must have been, like I said, critical hit. Which there are, there is a, a range of, wow, okay, so the, actually the Turville was targeting the Arcona, which is strange. Probably did some real damage to that one. It, so the Vittelsbach took some more, but missed the other one. Um, wow, so that's all it took. No, we're just withdrawing by 2,000. We're not fleeing yet. 
and they're trying to close, which is interesting. Wow, we did another 12% of the Duquesne. I wonder if the Duquesne is a Tourville. Maybe not, because she seems to be getting absolutely walloped. Let's take a look. France. No, she is not. She is 20,000 tons and almost the same defense, but apparently it's not saving her. So she might have actually been destroyed. Let's go ahead and skip to the bottom now. We know at some point they had to retreat, and they probably lost. Oh, so they didn't lose any ships in this. This is still a nice, very conservative... Uh, result, but supposedly they didn't lose any ships, and we lost no destroyers, no light cruisers, all these things. Not exactly true. We see that the amount of damage done. So if you're down to like 10% or something, apparently the game still manages to sink you. So, so we, I mean, because we can see, oh, we didn't lose anybody, but they lost five destroyers. Oh, so it actually, never mind. They didn't. None of the extra ships were sunk. Very good result for us, nonetheless. 10,001. I mean, even though this is not the aggressive simulator, that was very decisive. And we have occupied Cochin, China. Fantastic. Or at least we're invading. Do we occupy or are we invaded? I guess we're invading because battle in support of land. We have two ships here. I kind of want to see what this is uh, up against. So... Uh, Probably a armored cruiser. I dare not. I dare not go until I know. But maybe it's a light cruiser. Oh, she's she's in trouble now. Yeah, I think we're just gonna fight this one out because it's over. <laughs> there it is probably would have gone down a lot differently in the simulator because they would have just retreated. So that's the disadvantage of, as I already mentioned, that's the disadvantage of the simulator as it is. It's not very aggressive, but that's really the strength of it as well. <laughs> and even though we have these new destroyers coming in, we'll probably need a new class of destroyers since we have the triple, tor uh, excuse me, the triple torpedo tube mounts. Uh, let's not let them off lightly. We're definitely winning. So um, cruiser battle. We might not win a cruiser battle. I might even just decline this. Oh, wow. A German ship Brandenburg intercepts French. This is interesting. Why do we have a battleship intercepting a... I want to fight this, by the way. <laughs> so I'm sure that they would just retreat. How dare you try to run the blockade. Yeah, so not too surprisingly, this is a... Uh, let's see what the depth of is. 22 knots. We easily could take her if we can close. I forgot what the continuous run continuously is. We might even be closing. We did some damage apparently at some point. All right, well, that was wonderful. Another armored cruiser down. Yes, we've taken care of Kochi China, and we're now invading Anam. Invading Anam, this is perfect. We can secure even better terms. Okay, well, at least we got that last one. We don't get Anam, but at least we were able to take Cochin right before the right before the end, and we can probably take it as well here. We have six points. Certainly enough to take one of these, Anam or Tonkin. I don't think it really matters which one we take. New Caledonia's in in the, Paci uh, the southeast Pacific, I think, or southern Pacific. We don't want that one. Don't need to spread ourselves out too thin. I think let's go with Anam. Let's go with Tonkin. I don't know why in the end I switched over there, but now that it's peace, we can go full screen again. Very much doubt that the mechanic of recording is going to change in the next, but... So Anam is still there, but we now have Cochin, Tonkin, and Cochin, no, Cochin, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of, it's very cool the way we took these. If we had taken, if we had not taken Tonkin, we would have owned all of South Vietnam, but anyway. Which I think was just all Siam at this point. I don't think these, did these countries all exist like this? 
Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know exactly what existed, but I think this looks like Cameroon. I don't, I don't think things exist like this. That's like how they currently are. I don't think they exist like that in the 1900s. I mean, in 1900. Okay, so anyways, Southeast Asia, very good. We apparently don't even need extra ships on Foreign Station. And look at that, we've gone to 1915. This is episode number five or six, I forgot, but it's incredible that we've gotten that far without you know, really having to spend too much time in these battles. And we even got a few of those battles done quickly. All right, so what's the plan right now? Who's our next proposed enemy? That's, I think, a good thing we should stop and determine. We could actually... What the heck? Did Russia take both of our places here? Or did they... Oh, they took one of these in a neutral event. I think Angola was not owned by anybody. We had Southwest Africa. And Angola was taken in a neutral, like, an event. And, hey, you know what? The Russian... It's kind of cool that this ended up happening in this fictitious world, that they have colonies that are consecutive or right next to each other. That is interesting. Uh, we would get rid of Tanganyika or whatever this is, yeah, uh, if we could, so we wouldn't have to patrol the Indian Oceans, but... That's not how it is. Anyways, the German Empire has expanded in like a big, big, big way under Admiral Tortuga. We've definitely flexed our naval muscles. As far as research goes, let's just take another look at this. We're still stuck on really terrible guns. Uh, honestly, I probably should just start decreasing the, fun, the, you know, even fire control might need to be reduced down to medium. I just need to prioritize naval guns like in a better way if at all possible and we have the triple torpedo mount so i'm actually going to lower this down to medium what is our current destroyer count 1100 that's already good enough i'm already i'm completely fine go down to medium these two i think we'll keep on high they're worth it and let's see what happens so i think we could just not oh, founder tom i didn't see what happened there but we commission it? Maybe we commissioned it. Um, one. Looks like one sec. Okay, back again. Uh, geez, man, I, I'm my head is scattered even in the middle of a recording. <laughs> I've actually been pretty passionate about modding lately, and specifically right now, modding rule the waves. So I've been uh, trying to develop another script. I've talked to think a little bit about. Well, I mean, hell, this whole series is all about my simulator. So I'm actually trying to develop a non-player nations. Oh, 40 inch guns, amazing. Quality zero, which is very good. We need something bigger. I mean, it's 1916. We already need like 15, 16, 17, whatever. But this is good. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been trying to develop a non-player nation at war mod, or just the possibility for non-player nations to go to war and they fight using my simulator. That'd be nice, even if they didn't do a whole lot of, even if there weren't that many kills, it'd be nice to have that because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's always been something which has bothered me, and I think a lot of people are in the same boat, that we want to see the non-player nations fight each other. Let's take the opportunity while we have the moment of peace to redesign all of our minesweepers by doing absolutely nothing, and just putting, as I always say, a new fresh coat of paint on them. Although, typically, ships are repainting themselves pretty much constantly due to the corroding effects of seawater. But, okay, they're going in for their routine ins inspection. They're, they're once every five year inspection. And frankly, we can probably do this to the V3s as well. What are these? Okay, these are actually really good. I really like these destroyers. They're kind of like a little bit of everything. Six torpedoes, ten mines, four guns. I really like these. See, it, does, it shows you that you can get a very decent destroyer for only 900 tons. Like, this is a destroyer which every nation should fear. Now, 29 ton, uh, speed, a bit low. We're going to have battle cruisers going 30 knots, which means that they can outrun our destroyers. I mean, that is the whole point of these... Um, 1913. That is the po whole point of battle cruisers, is their big speed is supposed to be their defense. But I don't know if we want to update these. I think I will just rebuild them, because they're all in Northern Europe. We aren't, we're not going to have any issues, just to make sure they don't go obsolete. Yeah, 
Is there anything I do want to change? We're at z exactly zero, so... That's not even that bad on ammunition. I don't know how I designed this, but it, it looks... It actually looks quite good. <laughs> they are fuel type of coal, which is not ideal, but... Okay, so we'll just update all of these at the same time. And what else do we need to update? Possibly these Medusas. I really don't look forward to updating the Gephions. These Medusas, yes, do need to be updated though. So this is a eight, six inch. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. This funnel gets in the way, but that's a six sided broadside with the two extras being the redundance in the front. And it's got the three belts, the two deck, very strong armor, but it's still the two inch uh, turrets. These are shielded gun mounts, not full turrets. Makes them a little bit vulnerable, but I, I like the design overall. So we will rebuild these as well. Do we have quality? Let, let me take a look at our guns again. Yeah, zero. We really are not doing that. Well, our naval gun progression is just abysmal, I would say, actually. Let's rebuild these. Although the 1911 is obviously a, a high priority as well. I'll probably spread these Medusas out as soon as they're done being rebuilt. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I didn't think about this. These actually need to be upgraded to... Nope, they don't have director. Okay, so I, I just did the upgrade, which is fine, but I'm going to rebuild these first. I'm not going to do it until we get the Medusas to replace the existing ships. So how do I want the distribution to be? First of all, what is our foreign tonnage requirements and can we already perhaps send some home? We require 16,000, we have a ton in Southeast Asia, which makes sense, we send our battleships down here. We also are well over the amount for North Northeast Asia. So it looks like all of our light cruisers can just be called in. So we'll just go ahead and update all of these and that's not true at all. What am I saying? We need at least two to go rep replace the ones on the in West Africa and the Indian Ocean. So let's do this. Move you to West Africa and move two of you guys to the Indian Ocean. And once those are on station, then we can uh, swap out our, our older light cruisers. Don't really want to go to war with Great Britain, but these battle cruisers are finishing working up. These are the ones built out of the United States, I believe. So we have the eight 14 inch guns. Are they quality one or are they quality zero? I can't remember. Yeah, the quality zero. So we actually can re now build this exact design. I believe this exact design at least um, in, in the German docks. It's a pretty good ship. Very happy with it. So they're on station now. So I think we actually are capable of, oh my gosh, oh, this is the reconstructions. They're all finishing at the same time. Okay, good. So let's um, get, sell the Russian government superimposed turrets on CIA. That's, in my opinion, a worthless technology anyway. Okay, and we have a lot of money, so it's actually time to build a new ship. Woo! Hooray, one of my favorite things to do. Let's finish these upgrades first. I know it's kind of the wrong order. The most efficient, in my opinion, is actually to do your upgrades after you have built your new ships because the new ships are gonna take longer to arrive. So if you want everybody to converge at the same time on the new war, you should be doing your new ships first. And then when you start to get some of the money back, it doesn't take very long, like six months at the most, usually sometimes eight or 10, but at the most eight, uh, eight to 10, right? Months for the ships to be upgraded. And that's usually if you're doing like a full main gun replacement or if you're replacing the engines. So you're usually doing some pretty extreme damage. I mean, extreme, uh, you're usually doing some pretty extreme work to get that long of a rebuild time. So it makes sense to just wait till you're very close to war because you can be doing those things eight months before war and still get them back in time. Anyway, for the Gephion, I don't think there's anything we need to do. Ship is pretty much perfect as is. We'll just remain exactly the same way, but as I said, just as usual refit. We we'll rebuild all these. I assume we're not having problems with foreign stations. Doesn't look like we are. So that's really good. And then we'll get the Manusas to be rebuilt as soon as those are back out. 
Um, we have these two Victoria Louise class, which are just two ten inch, two double ten inch turrets. Guess we'll rebuild these as well. They're both in Northeast Asia. How is our Northeast Asia? Again, thirty three thousand. We actually probably cannot rebuild both of these. We have one. Yeah, we only have one there. So let's move one up to Northeast Asia. And then next turn, we'll rebuild this other one. Uh, by all means, cross deck fire, yeah. <laughs> if you're using cross deck fire in 1916, you shouldn't be developing it. You can use ships with it, it's still very effective, but shouldn't be ordering it new. But, you know, it's a tough situation to be the. Uh, Wow, director firing is expensive. It's a tough situation to be the Russians. They're usually very technologically behind, so it's also understandable if they do <laughs> need ships with cross tech fire this late. All right, so I think we're good here. Director, da, 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 all we need, all we did basically is improve to director and take our rounds per gun down, way down, unfortunately, quite low. But they'll be very effective until they run out of ammunition. And we do have foreign stations tonnage is too low. That's because, of course, the short-range ships, I neglected to remember, they are, um, they don't count for as much. So all these are back, which is fine. We do have some destroyers. We might want to send out some destroyers. I'm just trying to think, how do we manage the foreign tonnage situation now? We can move one more just battleship to Northeast Asia. Okay. That's good to know. Northeast Asia. We'll just continue. It seems that we have the smallest tonnage large cruisers, CNBC. The Kaiser is displeased. Above water tubes on light cruisers, that's very good. So our light cruisers can basically become amazing destroyers now. <laughs> Carrying all the torpedoes that we need or want. Um, foreign tonnage is now satisfied, so this is good. We didn't even lose prestige. They were just pushing for extra ships on foreign tonnage, which I, I kind of like. It's nice that it's not like instant death. I really do want to check these Vondertons out, or Molka classes out. They seem pretty decent. Not very fast for a battlecruiser, but the first generation ones for 26 knots. Actually, the first generation battlecruiser probably were a little bit faster than this. 26, maybe 27? No, they might have been 26. Anyway, we do have some up upgrading to do. These are director firing. Yes. Are these director firing? Yes. Yes. And no. <laughs> okay, so the Mulk, uh, the Verth class, the old, the old group, basically, they are not director firing, although the Brandenburg class is. 1911 means that they can probably last another five years. We may even use them beyond that, but... Okay, yeah, I go for the win. Um, I just want these other light cruisers back so I can send them out on foreign station. Which is exactly what just happened. And we have an increased elevation, which means that everybody has to go back in. So I'm not begun. Actually, does it matter for these ships? Yes, it matters for everyone. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Gefions, let's just put you right back in. How long will this take? No time at all. All right, well, let's just do it. Yep, rebuild it all. And anybody else who's coming out recently? No, we'll have to get everyone else. I mean, it doesn't matter for destroyers. Does it? I don't care about it for minesweepers, but... Oh, these already are increased elevation? Wait, are you serious? They got increased elevation... Where were they built? Huh. Not exactly sure. Anyway, well... So it is what it is. Excuse me real fast. Not exactly sure what... How they got increased elevation. 
We'll even sell the French some technology. Smoke floats. Yeah, we probably should be... Who was the one that we were... Actually, let's get these Brandenburgs to be refitted while we're just sitting here. They don't need the um, director firing. They already have it. Give them increased elevation. Actually, that's pretty much it. That's all they... Yeah, that's all they need. So, save, refit, get them going. Yeah, we have lots of money actually coming in. So it is time to design a new ship, which I already mentioned. But first, I want to get through all these things just because uh, it's like... You know, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just I want to do it this way. Yes, we'll buy secondary turrets on dreadnoughts. In fact, this could be one of the things we use in our upcoming design. But they are complaining about us not having enough battle cruisers, even though we now might be in a better shape with the third one out. So we're at ninety-three thousand, which is better than France or Italy. Not if you count. Oh yeah. Wait, no, not if you count armored cruisers. Wait. Yes, if you count armored cruisers as well. We're behind on Russia. We're behind compared to Japan, and we're way behind, of course, compared to the British or the Americans. So maybe we do need another battle cruiser, especially because these Victoria Louise class, they're not like ones we want to keep forever. I think we'll go ahead and design... So there's been a few breakthroughs, right? There's triple torpedo mounts, which means we can get a better destroyer. There's torpedo mounts on light cruisers, which means we can get a better light cruiser. But then there's also just getting more awesome dreadnoughts. I think we're going to go with a battle cruiser. That will stop us from being, you know, kind of maligned in terms of the, the Kaiser. Do not like this at all. 14 inch guns. Like, this is just the ugliest superstructure. I refuse to let that happen. Okay, this is better. I can make, I can work with this. Mm. Okay, so far so good. Now, I think our triple turrets are not necessarily good yet, but I think I'll do something like this. Uh, this is supposed to be a battle cruiser. So, we'll do the usual stuff. Germans technically did armor more. Their battle cruisers are actually light gun, heavy armor. So, you know, it's the whole trifecta thing. You have three things that you can design for. Speed, armor, and guns. And you can only design really, if you want to favor, you know, if you want to put emphasis on some of these, you can only heavily favor two. The British tactic was go for guns and speed and the, for battle cruisers, and the German tactic was to go for armor and speed, which means that they just use light, lighter guns. Which one is more effective? I don't know. It's actually a really good question. I, I In theory, I actually kind of like the German approach better because... Um, what's the role of the battle cruisers anyway? They're an they're supposed to be anti. Um, I mean, basically, if you want ships, the battle cruisers like the British to fight on the line, they're gonna have a lot of punch, but they you risk losing them. The battle cruisers of the Germans supposedly, I mean, at least in theory, should be able to fight on the line. They aren't gonna do as much damage, but at least they won't sink as quickly. And then, if nothing else, they can act as bullet sponges, right? So. That makes them, in my opinion, good complements to the battle fleet line. Six inch turrets, we can get away with five inch ones here. A difference of 200 means I'll probably go for the six inch guns. Can we actually get double turrets? Yeah, we haven't fully developed them yet. I guess we've developed single turrets. Yeah, okay. So we could even save this one, it's not illegal, even though it's 500 tons overweight. I think 3% isn't that the amount of weight you're allowed to be over? I don't know, might be less, but we don't plan to be that much overweight. We'll probably lower the belt a little bit. Wow, turret top of four should be sufficient. Everything else looks good here. 
We don't have higher than that. Could get probably another couple of six inch guns. Wait, we don't, don't we have oil firing? We, t we don't have access to oil. Oh, very interesting. Uh, it does make the battle cruiser a little bit less of a decent option. Ugh. It's hard to make a battle cruiser only going 26 knots though. That's so slow. And I don't know why we chose 33,000. We can go up to 34,000 if we so choose. But I think this is actually kind of looking good, believe it or not. I do like this. I think we will kick this up to nine guns per side. Um, this is just too fast. It's just a little bit too fast. So we'll kick, that, we'll kick that back down, I guess. It's a little bit too fast. Well, you know what? Actually, we can take the conning tower down to this. That probably gives us the ability to do that. Oh my gosh. It's a sign. Whenever you hit exactly zero, you know it's a sign that that's exactly the design you should be using. So unless there's any glaring errors in anything, and I don't see anything, we're just going to save this as is, and we're going to build it. It's like a, a voice from the heavens. We'll build three to start, maybe four. Yeah, I think we can get away with four. We'll see, because we have some, we're cycling some ships in and out here, but. And what kind of technology are we going to develop? It's the big question. Oh, oh, no immediate technology is released. Yeah, we're dealing with 14 inch guns. They're de they are also using 14 inch guns. I think this is basically almost exactly, oh, they're a lot heavier. This is a dreadnought though. 23 knots, not that much slower though. It's pretty fast. Very good armor, my goodness, 30. Yeah, that's barely faster than us. Oh, secondaries are a bit low though. 18 four inch guns for the secondaries, unusual. Two submerged tubes, I mean, still the armor on this thing is just insane, which is good because, I mean, for them. Ah, Dominican Republic. I was gonna say uh, that with their flash fires, it might even, it might help them quite a lot. We'll back our allies unconditional or international people. Well, we just put them down. We're gonna do it. Nah, I was gonna be willing to lose it because we just laid them down. And it's not a big deal if we have to scrap them because we've only lost like one month of work. And then we can design some things for the, but anyways, it didn't work out that way. In fact, it hurts us in terms of, oh, Ireland has declared independence, wow. Um, hurts us in terms of our budget to have done that, but that's fine. Yeah, we'll take the better 13 inch guns just because it's one less thing for, I don't know why France would be selling us guns though. Um, anyways, one less thing for our research to, to unlock. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's gonna hurt a lot in the budget side of things, but yes, buy everything. We have three more months left. Two more. Extra resources just in time. <laughs> just in time to use it on something. One more month. Oh, man. What's our maintenance at? Oh, my gosh. Uh, we'll have to not do it. <laughs> We're out of money. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll have to pause one of these, actually. <laughs> Probably should have paused a little bit earlier. Actually, this is... I don't know exactly why we're... We need to mothball some things, I think. The Brandenburgs. Um, these are back, so let's send them out to foreign stations. Let's go both of these to Southeast Asia. We never upgraded. We have these Gephions, which need to go to foreign station as well. So let's send one to West Africa. Two to Indian Ocean. Uh, two to Southeast Asia and two to Northeast Asia. Just keep things simple. Like so. And now the Medusas can be done as soon as basically the other ships are done. But yeah, we we'll absolutely have to go halt. We might even have to halt two of these. I'm gonna halt two preemptively, which means that we can get six more months, but Let's see if we can get some more money somehow. 
Oh my gosh. All or nothing. Yikes! Why did I not wait for all or nothing? That's a huge benefit. We can only go two more months. Um, but I don't see any... Well, a lot of these ships can go to reserves. Can they be reserves if they're not... Can you guys go to reserves? Yeah, have to be in home area. So the Brandenburgs can go to reserves. That might help a little bit. It did. I mean, we have two more months basically to decide where the rest of the money is going to come from. Now, the Vittelsbach, I believe, has to be updated because it doesn't have increased elevation. It has bad 14-inch... Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put these on reserve as well, which is going to save me a lot of money. That was actually a good idea. Oh, my gosh. Quality 1 versus quality negative 1. We have to do it. Which means we're going to have to halt yet another... Just to make, wait, yeah, to get money back. Oh my gosh, stop. Please stop selling me. I don't understand. I, I have to buy it though. <laughs> Our monthly balance is just 3.2 and this is 3.9. Yeah, I can't afford it yet. Basically flat four. Okay, we're up. We can afford another month. Zoom. Not bad. Monthly balance is actually pretty good. Oh my gosh, this is... Wait, this is the same one? No, this is 38,000. Oh, they went from... They went from 10, 14 inch to 12, 16 inch. Okay, wow. The British have some very, very scary weapons. And I'm really happy that we're in a security agreement with them. There's the improved triple turrets, which is really good. I think we have to do an upgrade on the ships to get that over with. But the Moltke only has double turrets, so that one's fine. And we don't... Yeah, we don't have triple turrets then. Or at least we won't until the Elsass class comes out. Okay, fair enough. Very low on the money. Yes, we'll take technology. I mean, we'll sell technology. That's interesting, because France is one of the nations I'd like to target for war. And this is an, an immediate upgrade for them, but I'm going to sell it anyway, because we're a little bit low on money. So, 10 more months. I think we... I'll go one more month. Okay, let's unlock this one now. We can just somehow make it like seven more months <laughs> without pausing, but uh, I mean, without halting that other one, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Well, I'm probably going to have to wrap this episode up here as well because uh, we're getting nearly to the 40 minute mark. Hmm. And I actually need to halt that more importantly because we do have some ships which I need to, you know, bring in for some upgrades. Increased elevation. Everything else is fine, I think. Okay, let's do all this. So it's probably not going to change much. Yeah, budget barely changed. Gaffions are done. Are these with improved whatever? I'm not going to increase their elevation then. You know what? It's just it's too late. These guys have not... Well, they haven't been upgraded since 1911. Have these? Did these get it? They did. Okay, good. So the Worth class does need to come in. Should we just send our Brandenburgs? I guess we need, we're just going to send our Brandenburgs over to Northeast Asia now. Or Asia, just in general. So let's send all of them over to Southeast Asia. We have a strong presence there anyway. I mean, we have a ton of colonies. So it's going to be worthwhile. And then we can cycle out these birth classes for their upgrades. Let's get these two to move to Northeast Asia. Northeast Asia. Just do some adjustments here. Oh gosh, 1500. That, that's the end of the line destroyers. So obviously we have to accept Monthly balance is negative, so we're going to have to pause this one now instead for a moment. Okay. Who threatens us? We still have some places in Southeast Asia that we can benefit from taking out France. I wouldn't mind attacking Russia once again. Let's look at the Almanac. 
this is the last decision we'll make for this uh, recording. So as far as dreadnoughts and service go, Russia is extremely, I mean, Russia is very, very weak, which is not too surprising. We'd have to move a huge force over to West Africa to, to really take advantage of this. I feel like Russia, especially with their low tensions right now, Russia should be a priority after we go to war with France one more time. Yeah, I think that that's what we'll do. And we're getting to 1919. We're almost to the end of this game, which is amazing how quickly things are going. So I will say we will once again try to declare war on France. They're just trying to recover too. So it feels like we're just picking on them a whole bunch. But France and Germany, they historically did not... Well, they had several conflicts, didn't they? <laughs> not just in the 1900s, not just World War I, not World War II. They had two wars in the World War... I mean, in the century before that as well. So... Russia stole technology from us. We'll send a diplomatic note. We don't mind going to war with them. But here is where I will save and call this episode to a close. So not too much simulator action in this one, but I did go into great detail in the last video. Again, take a look out for the Rule the Waves fleet tournament. Be like the closest you can get to multiplayer. You'll be designing some battleships, some uh, dreadnoughts, battle cruisers, light cruisers, and destroyers, and pitting them against an exact tonnage requirement for other people as well. So... I think it'll be fun. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.